Hey y'all, we spent $3,500, which is basically all of our money and then some, on these circuit boards for our dream project with Carnegie Mellon University for an intro to robotics class. And then I almost wasted all of that money making absolutely stupid and avoidable mistakes. This is every flavor of robot. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Sorkel Alex here. Um, wait one second. PCBWay is sponsoring this video and they still haven't given me a script. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put really cool graphics on the silk screen of your PCB projects because I've always noticed that PCB way gives pretty good silk screen quality. It's been quite sharp. If your silk screen's cool enough, it doesn't matter how bad your PCB is messed up. So their logo is gonna go down right here in the corner and we are gonna go into uh, whatever your preferred choice of graphics editor is. That's something that can export vector graphics. The alternative is that you do it all in your ECAD editor with these lines. It just never does quite what I want it to. Anyways, so that's why we use our vector graphics. So just take anything and export it as an SVG. And note that any color that's not transparent is going to be filled in on the silk screen. Go back into KiCad, go to File, Import, Import your graphics. Hey buddy, I think that's a little bit too big, don't you think? Eh, that looks good. So. Once you've finished your silk screen, you've added about five more ducks to your board. And with our referral code, you can take $5 off the cost of your order. So check the description. To order, just export and upload that file to PCBWay's website. They offer PCBs, PCB assemblies, CNC and 3D printing services. They're really great. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring Every Flavor Robot. A little bit over half a year ago, we had a friend at CMU let us know about problems with their robotics class. Their hardware was broken. And the company that they bought the hardware from wasn't even selling them anymore. They couldn't fix them because the solution was proprietary and the parts were old and out of commission as well. And even if they could get more or fix the existing ones, they were frustrated because they were trapped in a limiting ecosystem and the solution wasn't even that good for teaching the kids. So as we talked more about this, we quickly realized, hey, our open source robot platform, MotorGo, would be a great solution to these problems. We just had to package it in a way that it would work for their class. So this is actually like a great collaboration. It was, it was just a no brainer. We started working on it immediately and it went really smoothly until very recently when we needed to deliver the boards to CMU. And that's where I realized I made a huge mistake. I got too excited and I spread myself a little bit too thin and I made some egregiously stupid mistakes that could have been avoided, including ordering the wrong connectors on some boards, mixing up the footprints on some others, and on some of them, I made all of the above. It was a complete mess. Immediately, we went from looking at our dream project, about to close our dream project in STEM education, to figuring out how to fix an engineering nightmare. And if we couldn't figure it out, we were going to be out of the time and money to fix it, we could potentially mess up our friend's class, and we might be ruining our reputation with CMU entirely. This connector is called an XT30. If you take a look at it, like all good power connectors, this is a polarized connector, which means that there is a, a right way, and there's a freaking wrong way, okay? And I did it the wrong way, and I, I can't undo it. Mm, it cost me a lot of money. That's a mess up that, that one hurts right in the wallet. Deep breaths. So the reason the reason why it's messed up is if you take a look at the copper, the design looks fine. It's actually in the schematic. Well, the schematic also looks fine. And that's where it's tricky. In KiCad, the footprint does not align with the symbol of the footprint that I chose. And that's because I chose a generic one and I've learned my lesson. If I'm ever going to use a polarized thing, I need to be more careful than that. It, really kind of makes me mad that this is purely like a plastic piece that is like wrong here but if we remove that connector we can put in a little pigtail version and the board should work except it doesn't stop there that first board didn't work but it wasn't the one that we were sending to cmu it was just a side project unfortunately the board we are sending to cmu also didn't work okay so this is just a barrel plug, um, not like the XT30 from the other board. The good news is that polarity wise, this one is okay, but it seems like whenever I was ordering this batch of boards, I couldn't find the part for the barrel connector that we used on the last revisions. I looked for replacements and I chose one and it dropped in perfectly, except for one problem. Well, actually, I mean, one, one millimeter sized problem. 
it's the wrong size. Here's a scaled replica explanation of what's going on for those visual learners in the audience. But at least this one has a fix. I went ahead and I put in an order just now for the right barrel plug connectors. So they're just gonna have to come in the mail and whenever they come in, I'll just take off the old connectors and I'll put in those new ones. And that is going to be a pain, but it is possible. At this point in the project, I could feel myself really catastrophizing, focusing on how much money we're losing, which we don't have a lot of. These costs for R&D are really expensive. And thinking about well, what is gonna happen if I can't figure these things out and we can't make fixes for them. And was I really so careless that like these engineering mess ups were going to cost us the deal with CMU? Like this was our dream project. Am I about to mess it up? We're gonna cut it off there. Ranting feels great, but it's not an engineer's job to be emotional about these things. Mistakes happen, and there's always time to beat yourself up about it later. But I need to remind myself, if there's still time on the clock, we need to be focusing on what we can affect. Just deep breaths. You can figure this out, no big deal. While we were debugging the little sensor guy, the barrel plugs came in the mail. Okay, so we got our hot plate. It's actually frozen right now, like really cold, because it was outside where things are cold. We're just gonna let that heat up. We're gonna get the boards, and we're gonna put them on the hot plate so that they also get hot. The long, long process of desoldering and then subsequently resoldering all of the barrel plugs so that they fit. It's kind of stressful because I'm like pointing this like 450 Celsius hot air gun at these boards and I'm just like hoping that the expensive parts on the bottom of the board aren't just like falling off into the hot plate. And there were a couple times that I like melted off the barrel plug and then it fell off and then I like pick up the board and I look at it and like all of the components are just like shifted sideways and then I just had to sit there with tweezers and slowly put them back. We're gonna use those as dev boards. We're not gonna be selling those to people, but the boards did work actually. So that was a just absolute, just absolute relief off of our chests. Now Swapnil could start to do all of the unit testing because that's only one piece of the entire delivery that we need to make, but at least that one is working and the crisis was averted with the barrel plugs. Swapnil tested every single one of the motors that we handed off to CMU, which was a lot. I think we have 400 motors. He tested the encoders and the motor go and the sensors that we sent them and all of it. And then we packaged everything into a nice box and handed it off. We did it. I, I can't believe it. It's not real. Delivering this box was a really big deal to us. This was a dream project, and I hope it continues to be a dream project. We don't plan on just giving it to them and being like, ah, it's yours. We're going to be working with them throughout this class uh, to help teach these students as much robotics as possible. All of that is ours? The only thing I thought ours are the actual Legos they used to build it. Okay, yeah. Dude, we love seeing you. Yeah. Wow. Why does it look so black and like sleek? Because they printed it black and sleek. <laughs> the, oh, they printed yeah, it all yeah. housing. Because like, the dude, plank is cool. Look, dude, this, is, this is a robot. Plank is a black tie event. Whoa, oh, dude, yeah. what? That's, that's some good stuff. Sick. That oh, looks that's sick. So cool. That looks so much cooler than your your crappy robots. Wait, right? also, I'm surprised. <laughs> Before they were stuck with proprietary connectors, outdated standards, and they were stuck with very specific limited sensor selections, and the circuit boards didn't even have any ducts on them. And now we fixed like most of those problems. But we also got to spend time designing and contributing to an open source hardware problem that is much bigger than just this class at CMU. Anyone who's interested in controlling a bunch of brushed motors with the Raspberry Pi can use this product. They can build it themselves. They can look at the design. It's completely open source. And so what I'm saying here is that this project can help the community in multiple ways and at multiple levels. I wasn't playing up how scared and upset I was earlier in this video, but if any of you find yourself in a situation uh, where you've messed up really bad, just take a small moment to step back and remind yourself that you've probably been through worse and it's probably turned out better.
If you're still watching this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you to everyone here on this list for helping us make this type of content to share with the world. If you're interested in circuit boards, and specifically the circuit boards in this video, you can find them at our website at motorgo.net. Some of them are still in testing, but if you do want to help us out in that way, you'd be some of our most valued customers on the planet. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.